Okay. Happy or Merry Christmas Eve Eve. So I wanted to talk about um, feeling ashamed. And there's so many different layers and categories of this. But I just kind of want to go over the general gist of what it's like to feel ashamed. So I was watching The Real. Adrian. I was a little mad at uh, what she said. So let's just see what uh, I saw on TV and then we'll talk about it. Watch Adrian's comment. Oh, Adrian, shut up. I'm just being funny. So I just want to get to what Adrian says that really offended me personally. But it's just what she said, not who she is. Me too. Here's what she says. False. Nope. So I want to talk about what she just said. She said, wouldn't you be in the mindset that like, oh, I don't want nobody 
people don't think that way. People don't think that when you are, let's just say I know more people on this four fingers and a thumb who tested positive, maybe days after being at an event, who still went to work, who still went to the grocery store, who still went to walk their dog. And that's where I've kind of felt a little bit of arrogance from the statement, not the person, but the statement was like, why don't you like, like how, how arrogant you worry about your image, da, 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 da. Some people have a stress of their job. They can't call out sick. So they have, to, they have to keep quiet about their COVID status sometimes. And you know, for me, I did it the right way. I said, look, <clears throat> I'm not working. Shut the doors and windows. Stay inside for, uh, I stayed inside 11 out of 14 days. CDC called me on day number 10. They said, you've cleared and you're free to go. You're free to like go about your life. And that was back in March where pre pretty much people didn't really know what was going on. Now I think it's a time where, but the thing about it is every time when anyone hears that they are COVID positive, immediately you think I'm going to die. Immediately you break down and cry. Immediately you go through your whole life and you think, uh, hey sis, immediately you think like, oh my gosh, like you feel ashamed. And if you have a paper trail of being embarrassed, humiliated and ashamed, would you even have the, the balls to No. People who wouldn't say that they um, are COVID positive when people are, are not, people are not open to understanding what it's about anyway. And, and, they, and we even depend on the resource of media and television and the news networks to, to give us information, but they're not even giving us viable information. You know, I like, pff, there's so many things I want to say, but the bottom line is <clears throat> nobody likes to feel ashamed. People don't like to be humiliated publicly. I have a different opinion because I've been forced in situations where I had to be in public and I had to do something whether I was agreeing on it or not. You know, even as a, 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 a fitness, previous fitness instructor in my last career, <laughs> there are times I had to show up to a class and I didn't even know like how to teach that style. And I knew that people were going to chastise, ridicule me, uh, write negative emails, sabotage my name, then go on social media and forward my f my photos to HR and this, this and that. That's very humiliating. Nobody wants to be humiliated, period. But because I knew I volunteered for something like that, I had to learn how to write it out, which I'll get to in a minute. But when it comes to this pandemic, no one knows how to write it out. And when you're alone and isolated, nobody wants to be alone and isolated. People don't want to be by themselves. We're already trying to be validated with our own thoughts, opinions, and viewpoints, regardless of which side of the table you are. Like people don't want to be, people don't want to be disagreed with. People don't want to be surrounded by people who disagree with what we're saying. Kenya, I think you you were telling me this the other day in private about <clears throat> people who make you feel one thing because you thought this and that about that, but then they forget that you're the common root. Uh, of why you have a relationship with somebody. Like, can't you respect what we have first before you go in and you rip me apart? You know, that's something that I, I go through a lot is I was fortunate enough to reconcile with a friend. Oh, we've been friends for 11 years. We had an accidental falling out during the summertime. And it was really healthy and positive that I reached out and I said, look, I effed up, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, I messed up. And every time I think about it, I wanna cry because it's a very important friend of mine. I never want to ruin that relationship. So I'm very grateful that that friend is back in my life and we healed the wounds and we patched it up. But nobody wants to be ashamed. So when I said the things to him that I did over the summer, it shamed him. And guess what? He was like, well, if that's the way you feel, then fine, we're done. And then after that conversation, that was like four months ago, I was like, I just like dumped a friend that I've known, like a family friend, like someone you die for, um, over something stupid that I made a gesture about. So uh, to the degree of what Adrian said in The Real, it, it, it's not really what I want to say to her if this ever were to cross her path is, be mindful of what you say because the people who are who have suffered 
from the COVID situation, even suffering from other situations, it's different when you haven't had it, you know, and you're speaking on the behalf of people who have had it, or you're speaking on the behalf of the people who, um, speaking for the behalf of the people who should have common sense. People don't know how to have common sense, which is why there is awareness and platforms like this where we can all talk and so I, that's why I would say that conversation is always key to everything. Talking it out is always key to everything. Being open and honest about everything is key to everything. That's how you write it out. You know, like when I opened my big mouth and said that I, I was COVID positive in, in May, that was on Mother's Day weekend. I don't know how long I was exposed. I don't know how long I had it. But once I found out, I knew, stay your ass at home. <laughs> But a lot of people were ridiculing me prior to. Why didn't you stay home? Well, because I didn't know I had it. It isn't an act like I told everybody at back in uh, May and June. It isn't a situation where it goes away because everyone did their part and stayed home. It's a matter of what happens when you get it. What can you do in the meantime to prepare your body before you get it? Build your immunity. Exercise. You know, enjoy those moments with people you love because every day is pretty much it could be your last. I used to never believe that, but then I started to kind of believe it recently. Moving on to another subject. So I was my mom was here. Don't cry, Aaron. But uh, my neighbor down the hall, uh, my who's my mom's bestie. Um, she's like, so what are you doing for Christmas? I'm like. Spending time with someone I just met. And uh, she's like, oh, God, don't tell me you met somebody else. I'm like, I did. <laughs> and I said the thing about, like I said yesterday or the day before, the thing about dating and talking to people is you're learning experience. You're gaining experience about people's behavior, their triggers, and their mannerisms. So that when you get to a mature place in your life, you actually know exactly how to avenue yourself with somebody and you actually learn who's good for you or not. Even with friendships, you know who's good for you or not because let's say like you have a, a best friend who kind of reminds you of someone that you probably date. That's probably a good friend to keep forever. That's like a life, that's like a life friend, forever friend. A lot of people who I know in my avenue of life, they, they remind me of brothers and sisters, which is why I call people bro and sis a lot. And having my, my own brother pass away last year, I've started to adopt people as bro, bro, and sis. Because I, these are people who, are, who were close to me throughout this whole time. And I never want to unacknowledge the people who are important to me. And so now that I'm getting a little older, I'm like, you know what? I need to keep the people in my life around closer and communicate the people more better. And I'm working on how to communicate better. Aside from being sick on the weekend, um, you know, uh, communication was awful. But, but being ashamed, I was always ashamed. Always felt ashamed. Always was bullied. Always was put down. Always was told I wasn't enough. Auditions constantly told no. So being immune to no and being immune to rejection, I've kind of found a backbone where I'm just like, meh. But... Um, <laughs> The one down here, oh, I totally skipped subjects on you guys. So when I said I was spending time with somebody that I just met, my neighbor down the hall, or she's the same age as my mom. She goes, oh, you really? Why can't you need to just be alone? Be be by yourself. Be I'm like, look, girl, I've been in pandemic too long. I've been in this quarantine too long that you are kind of you're like it's like our addiction right now is to be closer to somebody <laughs> anybody but when you find somebody who is perfectly aligned with you and yeah it wasn't too long before the last person was around but they screwed up <clears throat> so now it, it's like i found somebody who's like in the alignment where i'm like this is great and perfect we're gonna call him motorcycle <laughs> And, you know, I looked at my mom because I never talked about dating in front of my mom in person in front of somebody else. So this person had all of this comments and gestures. Like, you need to just figure out what you can do with your career. What you gonna, I'm like, look, 
there's no career right now in the pandemic. Right now is the moment that we need to live in. So I was fighting not being shamed in front of my own family member and not feeling the shame of actually acknowledging somebody who is polite and respectful and respects my body, respects my mind and respects my soul and stayed over for a day <laughs> and showed complete respect for my home. I didn't say that part though. But uh, that's my own That's my own specialty is knowing that there is a special thing inside each person. But even if I made a mistake in judgment and it allowed this person in my life and it was a mistake, at least I enjoyed the moment before it fell apart. And that's where I have to start curving, you know, how do you say flatten the curve when it comes to feeling ashamed? You have to put yourself in the position what initiated the the reason why you put yourself in a position and then the reasons why people attacked you. You have to immediately say, that's not my problem. I didn't ask to be talked to that way. I didn't ask to be treated that way. But you need to respect what I feel right now. And I think that's where the miscommunication is with adults. Adrian. Adrian Bailon, what she said, uh, because they, they were, I was watching The Real and they were talking about people diagnosed with COVID and people are lying about it. I can actually vouch for people who lie about it because they don't want to be ashamed. And so uh, Garcelle, she said that it's not that it's the correct thing to lie about it, but a lot of people are staying silent because of the shame and the pushback that comes from the misunderstanding of it. So Adrian kind of said something that inferred to Garcelle, so it's okay to lie. And it's like, well, but when you don't say something, I used to think when you're quiet about something, it's still as equal as a lie. And I actually want to take it back because I'm a woman. I'm allowed to change my mind. <laughs> no, but, you know, I think we're all allowed to change our mind. And I think looking back, <clears throat> when you don't say something, it's not a lie. And I watch a lot of general hospital, too. And a lie, I watch how Carly didn't say a lot of stuff. And she got, like, half of the people don't like her because she kept something secret. She had a lot of secrets. But then when she tells the truth, it's almost like she gets treated the same way as not saying anything. So a lot of times it's best to just tell the truth. Omit to something. Open your mouth and say something. Um, you don't have to tell all your business to people, but a lot of times... It actually feels very relieving when you get to exchange dialogue of what you're going through and you get to acknowledge how you got through it. So that's why I always spill out my my drama. <clears throat> and then my, my <laughs> God bless my father, but my dad goes, I, I don't even, you need to get a phone call from you, son. All I gotta, gotta do is just watch you on Facebook and then I'm already updated. <laughs> I mean, it's better than having a therapist and having to regress in my emotions that I, you know, neglected to open up about. Because that's what we all have to do about everything is open up. That's the key to life, opening up. Um, there was this um, conversation I had with a friend of mine. She's a spiritual person like I am. And we were talking about um, our chakras, you know, our chakra system. And so uh, I was saying, like, yes, the goal to life is to amplify these chakras. And she's like, yeah, but what happens after you amplify them? I'm like, we raise our vibration. She's like, but you can't raise the vibration unless you open those chakras with higher vibration. I was like, oh. And then you saw, like, smoke come out of the back of my head. I'm like, I didn't even think of that. And then it made me think about the Bible, how it talks about the seventh seal, which is here. It's a, it's a chakra. It's a crown. So I was like, oh, that's what that means. And then everything just started making sense to me. That the goal in life is to open the seventh seal. We have to open everything. But the first chakra is the root. That's where your feet is. Or when you sit on your feet when you meditate. I don't want to navigate. Okay, so motorcycle, he's so cute. So um, <laughs> we were watching uh, Will and Grace. And there's an episode where Grace was dating a, a Buddhist person. And so the Buddhist was trying to teach her how to meditate and, and meditate on her chakras. And she's like, ooh, you just kissed my third eye, which is here. And so um, motorcycle, I'm looking at, looking at him, and he was like, 
what are the chakras? I'm like, oh my gosh. We got to start from scratch. I got to explain to somebody. And then I thought in my mind, you know what? He's great because he doesn't know what the chakras are and he's a polite person. Which he probably already has amplified his chakras, but it's not for him to really know. It's not for everybody to know all that stuff. And I just said, you know, I think that is the key to not offending people and shaming them is because just because I know something and they don't, it doesn't put me at a higher scale than, th than that person. I actually value that he's in a, not in a bubble, but he's in his own like paradox. And his own paradox doesn't need to know all that, but what is good to his heart is actually all he cares about. And I was like, oh my God, this is somebody who doesn't know a thing or two about dance somebody who doesn't care about what I wear to go on stage and how I meditate. And this, this person doesn't need to know about my own personal journey. All that matters is what we are to each other. And it's the first time in my life that I actually dealt with somebody that didn't have a common interest with me. Who's 10 years older. And my mom was happy. She's like, you, you deserve to have, it's your time. You're getting older and uh, you, you deserve to have, Somebody who respects, and that's why I started navigating my uh, thing that happened outside to what happened on TV. Um, feeling bad and carrying that with you will always attract toxic people to your environment. It'll actually attract you to having to always give advice to people who are like, you know, people who weigh you down all the time. People who weigh you down never go away. So it's always best to uh, always speak in a lifting up perspective. Even if the person you care about is constantly, you know, like ER and Winnie the Pooh, you're aware of it, but you don't, you don't acknowledge it, right? So a lot of times if I know people are going through a hard time, I know that they need to be lifted up. So if I go... Oh, that really sucks what you're going through. Oh, I really hate that that happens. Oh, well, I hope you get through that. That's something that you would not tell somebody who needs to be lifted up. Because that shames them. That acknowledges what guilt they, they carry on their own. And a lot of people stifle on accident. I stifled for a long time on accident because of how I was criticized as a dance dancer or performer. Even like in like rehearsal, when you're just marking the steps... You know, it's not full out and still people criticize me. So uh, the end of the day, what I want to say is um, I want to give like two points about writing it out, which I, I said the other one earlier, which is to um, take it in. Understand it happened, roll your eyes, flip your hair back, but then understand. That's how, like I said, I separate the arrogance of what they said, put it in a bucket over there. And the person that I love, who I know isn't that arrogant in other categories, bucket over here. So that way, when we come up in another conversation, I could say, I understand what you said, but what you said was a little bit offensive because it just didn't come off authentic. It was a little bit arrogant how you said that. So if you put it in the realm of that over there... <laughs> I think that's how I got out of a lot of returning, I guess in the last five months, how I learned not to fire back and clap back at people and shaming them back because they shame me. And I know a lot of friends this year, people said some horrible things, even during the COVID situation, the COVID Aaron <laughs> saga, people said some very hurtful things. And I was just like, wait till you get it. Wait till you get it. And then... Come back to me and let me know, you know, how, how you think about me. And then they would turn around and go, you know what? I want to apologize because, you know, I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have been that harsh. Actually, you know, what vitamins were you taking, by the way? And um, where did you buy them? <laughs> Still, even about the, uh, the people in politics who put me down this year, um, they're, they're pretty much going to understand where I was coming from. I always tell a lot of people, the political narrative, and I mean, I just want to get that out of my system. <laughs> Let's say, I have another hiccup, I'm sorry. 
acid reflex. Let's just say. All this is about the stock market. If you put a high stock uh, value on a vaccination after someone else had fainted on TV, stocks go up on the new vaccine. Then guess what? The narrative changes. Oh, we're going to um see the thing. The goal is they gotta bail out everybody unemployment uh industries uh big box you know mom pop shop they have to bail everything else how do you do that you're not gonna tell a lie but you're not going to tell the truth right so here we are again to prevent shame on a grand scale what you instead of blaming mr t about it how do you include mr t on it let's let's make it look like he did something commendable before we kick him out <laughs> so him proposing that we go twenty two hundred dollars on a stimulus i'm like okay can you guys hurry up on that uh stock for the vaccine so we can all get uh not take the vaccine i think that was all just to encourage people who are wealthy to invest their stocks if i were wealthy i would have done that but i'm not i have no money to my name essentially but when i understand corporate and I understand corporate America, that's what I see. And being conservative, that's what I understand. It's not about this person's good and that person's bad. This is about how can you narrate something to where everyone gets a bailout. And then guess what? The low class still stays poor at the end of the day after January 20th. <laughs> Which is why the stimulus is 600 right now for middle low class. I'm just saying. But... If you bail out America by putting a lot of attention towards the vaccine to save the world because people are dying, da, 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 the stocks will go crazy for Moderna. So rich people, please hurry up. And then a stimulus package goes up. We are happy about our money. We go spend. We forget that there's a virus. And then guess what? We forgot that the virus existed. It just vanish. Kind of like Breonna Taylor. We forgot about that situation, did we? We forgot about police brutality. We forgot about Black Lives Matter. That's just how things go. <clears throat> so when it comes to, and there's my point, uh, number two. When it comes to feeling ashamed, being ashamed, or shaming someone else. You have to think of it as a screen write. How can I write the script to where this person doesn't hate me after what I have to tell them? <clears throat> or... How do I write a script to where I go through my emotions by myself and release them on my own without telling this person how they made me feel? Because I think when we get too excited to rush and tell people, this is what you did to me, they're not going to receive it. Because they're already being ashamed. They're already feeling like embarrassed or humiliated or egotistical, arrogant, and petty. Right? And selfish, like Adrian said in The Real. Some people are selfish. They probably just don't care. Like I had, a, I had a friend who I thought, how how insensitive of you to like know your COVID positive and go to work because you, you need money, really? Right? And you're not thinking about the health and safety of other people. It's not their fault they have to go to work. So that, that was the, my arrogant statement. And I own that arrogant statement from Aaron. But at the end of the day, if you're surrounded by a lot of people and you're isolate it like that you can't isolate from people when you have so many people around you so what do you do same as a dialogue when people bogart you with so many different emotions and you're like shoot i don't know how to get out of this situation there's so much so in general for both situations you just don't say anything you don't because if you do you're going to be exactly the same way as not say anything like, uh, General Hospital, Nina's about to find out who her daughter really was, and she's going to find out her daughter was dead. But she's going to find out her daughter was this mass serial killer person. It's best that Nina just don't know, because the hurt and the grief, at the end of the day, is not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth keeping things from people when you know and, hurt, and them being hurt by you telling them the truth later. But then I go back and forth. I'm like, you know what? Then it's not okay to... Not say something to people when you are holding on to information. It's hard. It's a tough thing. But 
you can't shame yourself when you get to that point that you said something you thought was helpful and it went the wrong way and that person took, that ain't your problem. So I, I always say my mantra is not my problem. Not my problem. You mad? Not my problem. Even some people that go, bleep, bleep, bleep. I'm like, you know what? At, at, you know, at the end of the day, it's not my problem. I, I do what I do because I felt it was the right thing and that's all that I can do. Not my problem. So anyways, I'm going to let you guys go. I just wanted to share a little piece of mind. Um, being mindful of what we say. Because it's all about what we say. It's not what we say, it's how we say it. And uh, some people can even tell me, like, uh, you can say, oh, your breath. Mm, mm, mm. Or you can say, would you like a piece of gum? It, when people say, <laughs> my, my dance class used to say this. And I told my class a lot, too. You guys know my breath is going to be funky after class. After breathing hard for an hour, and you know my gut culture is jumping around, and I'm not chewing anything minty because it's a dance cardio class. You know my breath is going to be horrible. Dragon breath all day. So I, <laughs> people used to know, coming close to me, they going to turn to stone like Medusa. But some people started giving me gifts. Mints, gum, food. You know, so that's how you do it. You, it's how you do things to leave people uh, feeling ashamed and publicly bullied. I'll talk about bullying later, but have a wonderful rest of the afternoon. I'm sure I'll be back later. Yes, I think at, what time was I going to do this? Like around 6, 7, 7.30, I was going to do horoscopes. Yep. Anyway, bye. Kenny, I'll message you shortly. Bye. <laughs>